Great. So now we're going to go on to a prototype, something very basic, but I'm sure it's going to be very successful when it's launched in a couple of months. It's going to be presented by a coder and a journalist. It's the news game case study. It's called Beyond the Paradise. We have with us Angelo Atanasio, director and journalist. He works with uh, European and Latin American uh, publications. He's received several awards, for example, the Premio Rey de España of Journalism, digital category in 2016, and special mention at the Ortega y Gazeta Award in 2016. Many on World Media Award, uh, 2015, in Tecnalia as well. And then we also have Carlos Ruiz. He's the co-founder of Interactives, a Barcelona-based business dedicated to the user-centered design, director of digital projects applying user experience methodology with a multidisciplinary team of communicators, designers, and programmers. He's an expert in project planning, interaction design, and front-end development. If Carlos cannot do it, very few people will. They're going to present uh, this uh, project with Maria Figueros, who is the coordinator for Documentary School of Docs Barcelona. So we'll have Maria first, and then we'll look at the project. So this is the premiere for this prototype of Beyond the Paradise. So a round of applause for Maria, please. Bueno, tengo un minuto, entonces. So I have a minute, right? Okay. Good afternoon. As Arna was saying, my name is Maria. I'm part of the staff of Docs Barcelona, so I'm sure that by now you have been welcomed to Barcelona by the team, but I'd like to repeat that. Welcome, thanks for being there. I'm the coordinator of the training side of Docs Barcelona, Docs Barcelona School. Docs Barcelona has been around for nearly 20 years, training documentarists. But uh, a couple of years ago, we started out the brand proper, Docs Barcelona School, uh, sort of gathering together all, all the uh, training material we had. Our working strategy is to set up partnerships with different universities all over the world to bring together the academic analytical part with the practical element that we at Docs Barcelona can contribute. So we have partnerships with uh, universities in Chile, Colombia, in Barcelona with uh, Blanquerna University. In fact, you may have seen uh, on chairs leaflets of the master courses we're going to start giving in September and a speciali specialization diploma for uh, interactive documentaries. But independently, as Docs Barcelona School this year, we uh, have been working on a course called a New Narrative, led by Arnau Gifreu. We've been working on it for six months, and we've been working on different subjects such as web, web doc, interactive, gamification, immersion, installation. In fact, here in the first row, I can see some of the teachers, such as Jacobo Sugari, Isabel Fernandez, uh, Ferran Clavey, who will talk to us later, people who've been teaching at the course. Within the course, a project was chosen to, be, to then be carried out uh, collaboratively. It was beyond the paradise. You go, you're about to see the prototype for it. It has been led by one of our students, students who was Angelo Atanasio, and by Carlos, who comes from the Interactives team, who've done uh, coding and design. And that's all from me. I'd like to leave you with Carlos and Angelo, and thank you once again for being here on behalf of Docs Barcelona. Buenas tarde. Buenas tarde. Yo soy Angelo. My name is Angelo Atanasio. I'm a freelance journalist. I think I've already been introduced by Arnau and Maria. Yeah, I'm Carlos. 
We are going to present Beyond the Paradise. There it is. It's a project whose main goal is to talk about the positive and particularly the negative consequences of the tourism industry in three tropical countries. Thailand, uh, Zanzibar, which is part of Tanzania, but uh, as a um, study case Zanzibar, and the Dominican Republic. It is funded by the European Journalist Center through the Journalist Grant Program. So it's a European uh, grant which uh, is given twice a year for journalism on the sustainable development goals of developing countries. That's why I chose those three countries. My goal was to look into the power relationships in those countries through the tourism industry, using tourism traveling as a metaphor. That's also why it's called Beyond the Paradise. I want to look into what there is behind what we sometimes take as a paradise. We want to see whether you know there might be beyond the paradise a bit of a limbo or even a hell that should be known about or, or indeed denounced. We could we also talk about for example a sexual tourism in San Seba, uh, in Thailand and in San Seba. we talk about environmental issues and in Dominican Republic I analyze whether the uh, all-inclusive model is uh, economically and socially uh, sustainable and environmentally sustainable too. The, pr the direction was mine together with Ruido Photo, a photographer's collective with three people, Tony Arnau, Edu Ponces and Pau Goye, uh, whose work I am very, very grateful for. The project was uh, developed particularly for a mobile phone production. We wanted to do uh, a news game that could be played on a mobile phone or on a tablet. But anyway, mobile devices. Also to work on engagement, which is something we've already discussed this morning. But anyway, I'm going to give Carlos the floor and he'll tell you much better than I could about how we wanted to develop it from a user-centric point of view and how then we developed the prototype. Great. So let me start here. From my point of view or the point of view of an, of an end user, an interactive contents has to be based on these two pillars uh, which weigh just as much on in the interactive project. 50% of the project has to be what, that is to say the contents, what the, the user consumes, and the other 50% is how, how they interact with the contents. And this is the job of the user interface. So in a couple of minutes I'd like to address this point in particular, this uh, user-centric methodology. Now, user-centric methodology, UX, means that the user is at the core of the project from the very beginning. So, since this is a digital interactive project, we're going to have for example, in this case, an interactive documentary, we're going to have to think of a series of users who will end up interacting with the documentary or, or the project. And that's going to generate an experience which is going to be specific for each one of those users. Now, we have to find out, learn about our users through some user research activities so that we can generate a, a, a mental model, an archetype of this uh, user that we're going to work for. It's not the same thing to think that you're going to work for 15-year-old kids or 50-year-old people. Uh, your target has to be clear and you have to know about them. Something else that you have to 
do is to assess, to, you have to be able to assess the user experience. You have to know how those users interact with uh, products similar to ours. This generates a certain amount of information and based on that you can design, define and optimize our interface to make sure it is usable, which is a great word, uh, attractive, intuitive and that it complies with the levels of satisfaction, efficiency and efficacy that the end user expects. Now, how is all this done? I'll go through this very briefly. These are some slides we use often at Interactives. This is UX with a uh, layer on top which is ICIDE. We can start out at different stages of the project. First of all, we would start out with uh, defining our basic requirements. And with ICITE, we can establish the different working areas depending on the stage we are at. ICITE is E for investigation, research, C for context, e interaction, T technology, and E evaluation assessment. So let me go through those techniques, those tasks, and the documentation that we should generate when we are faced with a digital interactive project. In an initial stage, when we're working out our basic requirements, we need to find out about potential users. How are we going to do that? Well, talking to them. How else? Through uh, focus groups, uh, uh, interviews, uh, needs, uh, analysis. Um, we also do our own business strategy, the dig digital strategy we should follow. And then when we go on to definition and design, that's where we find the, the bulk of the project. We're going to have to design the interaction that's crucial to have good uh, contents uh, architecture, good workflows, the different paths the users may follow and have a good content strategy so that you can have full deployment of contents and obviously you can produce them, which is Angelo's side of things, which is a fair amount. And uh, then we have uh, all the design, graphic design, which is based on a pen and paper prototype, which is easy to tear up and start again. We then go on to artistic uh, direction and graphic models, which give us a basic a rough idea of the project. From the technological point of view, I wouldn't like to get too bogged down on this. Just to say that there are programming frameworks and standards which uh, work really well. I encourage you all to use them. And they could, uh, they can really help when it comes to development. And finally, UX uh, has a stage which has an area which is assessment. It's got to be considered from the very beginning of the project. You've got to be able to assess all these different stages of the project with the end users in, a, in an iterative uh, fashion so that you can improve the project as you move along. Because what tends to happen is that you wait until you have the final product, you then show it and you ha if you have to make any changes, the cost is huge. So we want to avoid that. Now finally, I'd like to talk about navigation structures. In the case of uh, interactive documentaries, which at the end of the day tell a story, that's the point of it, you have to have a good uh, navigation structure, and have a clear path, identify the contents which are truly essential, which contribute enough value, work on its length. If they are too long, it might be boring. If it's too short, it won't be enough for the user. And uh, in the end, you will hopefully come up with the ideal uh, navigation structure. In the case of Beyond the Paradise, because it works as a trip, we have a lineal structure, but it with branches, so we can separate more static content, contents such as text, image, or even uh, uh, videos, and we separate it from the news game, which is the more interactive part for the user. 
This means that the user doesn't get lost in, in his journey, in his own particular journey. And that's all. Let's have a look at the demo. Here it is. Hang on. As I was saying, this is a prototype. We are still at developmental stage. This is important. The final version will come out uh, mid-July in uh, the .s uh, uh, newspaper in Spain and also in some international media. The first edition will be in Spanish and it starts out like this. It's a game. You've got to play with your You've got to use your hands. The idea is that navigation is uh, is through a, a touch screen. Everything has to be done using your hands. The idea of why we've decided to use mobile phones is because uh, over the last few years, we see that the information is being consumed through smartphones, mobile phones, and also, uh, mobile phone games are the ones that are most played in everyday life. You just have to go on the metro to see that. So this has been designed for users to be able to play any time of day without having to be in front of a computer screen. So the uh, contents production is, follows this sort of smartphone idea. So after the cover, you have the option of uh, registering, because talking about engagement with .es uh, uh, digital newspaper, we reached an agreement. The users who register, amongst the registered users who uh, score more points, because there is, you can score points, at the end of whatever period, the uh, digital newspaper will uh, raffle uh, real subscriptions. Uh, the idea is that commitment can be rewarded symbolically because you have learned from you have learned about problems and potential solutions, and you have a real reward. So it it is it is a, a game of a real proper game. So you have the option of choosing amongst these three experiences. And this is the design of a, a screen, how navigation screens, what navigation screens will look like. You have the score board, uh, then you'll have a menu for options. You'll always have background uh, ambience uh, noise that you can turn off, of course. And then on top, there is a bar so that you see where you're at within the different adventures that you can have in a particular country. That's one of the interviews. There are video interviews which have been uh, designed on the formula of three questions. It's just a micro video capsule so that uh, it's, it's all really short. And after each question, there is a test on that part of the interview. And you get points from that uh, test. So if you've listened to the interview, you get rewarded. You can skip the interview. Yeah? The navigation is absolutely free. But if you decide to get engaged, to get involved, and you read, and you listen to interviews, and you answer correctly, then you get more score, more points, you score more points, and you might have your reward. New places to experience tiny way of going to spend every dollar into local economy. Then you have a questionnaire, and if you answer croc, you're given a warning, and if you answer right, you score points. And there's an area where you can add contents and information on that part of the interview. That is about sexual tourism in Thailand. It's very immersive. Many videos are GoPro recorded to be more immersive, to make you part of it. And there is also 360 VR videos to, to 
put you into that place. And there is also a different type of game, uh, memory match, it's where the contents of the pictures is to do with the subject. For example, in Thailand, these are the, the windows for the the, the sex shops. Uh, well, it's what in journalism we call a photo gallery. But in photo gallery, you tend to just look quickly at the pictures. Here, however, you have to pay attention to details so that you recognize the pictures and you can again score points. Yeah, I'm not very good at that, says Carlos. So you score points and then we're going to just have a look at you have the possibility of uh, going into one of the streets. This is one of the streets of Badai in Thailand and this is a 360 video. It, it is not very smooth but it just takes you to that situation in a very immersive manner. And that's all. Bueno, como os he dicho, era un prototipo, pero realmente promete. As I was saying, that is a prototype, but it's really promising. We have time for one question. Any questions for this particular news game? No? News game will be ready more or less when? Yeah, 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 I said. Uh, uh, if all works well, mid July in the digital newspaper dot es and in other countries and yeah everything will be there and it will be uh, it was great to see also this uh, gamification process with uh, carlo and with eva dominguez who's one of the big figures in multimedia journalism and i'm sure that the final project is going to be great it's uh, the first time i see this and um, I'm left with a very, very pleasant impression. Great, thank you. We're going to go on to the next speakers.